Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to this special edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. We are not in Armstrong Fieldhouse, but we are walking strong with Bill Armstrong on the show with us here virtually. Guys, we're doing this all year. We're doing a little wine and a little football talk. And Bill, before we get into what wine we are sipping on uh, throughout the podcast today, which is your Block B, I do want to announce that we've done it. We've done the Pony Express case that we've teased now, uh, the special case of wine that we're going to taste all season long. These are the wines, and you have some high praise for it on uh, when, when you and I were talking about it. Oh, there you go, baby. There's that. Uh, so uh, for anybody who's interested, uh, Billy and I are going to open up one glass of wine per week. We have 12. We have 11 games left. Hopefully the conference championship. So hopefully it'll be 12. So uh, Liz and I uh, d- dipped into our, our cellar and um, we put together this this these 12 wines. And they're really, really fantastic. I mean, uh, they're probably the highest rated wines anybody in this on this uh, podcast would have ever drank and drunk, drunk, drank. Um, and um, we're going to do one a week. Uh, and it's remember the saying is if, if um, we win, we deserved it. And if we lose, we need it. So um, we put together this special Pony Express case certainly out of celebration of the fact that we're in the <clears throat> athletic coast conference, the ACC. I cannot believe it, Billy. I seriously can't believe it. And uh, we have to thank the board at SMU, especially Gerald Turner and David Miller, because they pulled off an absolute miracle getting us into the ACC. So uh, this special, this special Pony Express case is um, for each game of the season. We'll open up a glass of wine and talk about it. And then we uh, will, um, if they want, if you guys want to buy it, you can get online and buy it, and then share it with us each week as we go. So um, let's go. Let's talk about the game. Yeah, promo code Pony for free shipping on that uh, case of wine. And I think for for me, this is one of the better first games of the years that I've seen in recent memory, just because SMU was facing an opponent in Louisiana Tech that did have a week zero game under their belt. They did some good things in that one, but look, this was a back-to-back three and nine team that came into Ford Stadium. It was Preston Stone's first career start at home. What were your takeaways about his performance as he got at SMU to 24 first half points and route to a 31 nothing halftime lead? You know, uh, I gotta say, Law Tech is is usually a tough out. They're usually just a bunch of big farm boys, you know, kind of coon ass farm boys that are just tough as nails. We all remember the game two years ago when we were we were in <clears throat> at, at Law Tech and we threw up that alley oop at the end of the game to win. We were lucky to win that game, kind of the luck of Sonny Dykes, right? And uh, so it's always a little bit of a tough out. And uh, I was a little nervous on be, for Preston because he's been waiting for this moment in front of his home crowd, and I thought he just did terrific. I mean, came out three touchdown passes, you know, a, a couple of really good throws that were that were. Uh, turn around because of uh, penalties, if you recall. And um, I don't think I've ever been to an SMU game where we (laughs) had a shutout at halftime. I mean, the last time we had a defense like this would be maybe back in the 80s. I mean, so, I mean, think about it. Our defense outscored their offense in the first half. So uh, (laughs) we had a a pick six, and then uh, we shut them out in the first half. I thought we got a little bit sloppy in the second half. Uh, the, the second team played for a, a big chunk of the second half, uh, let a late score. So this, the, the game wasn't near as close as, as the score indicated. But I thought first game, solid. The, did the defense exceed your expectations? I know you were you were around for fall camp. You were you, know, you got other things going on, though, too. This defense gave the off, SMU offense kind of some fits here and there in camp to see them kind of control the line of scrimmage like they did. Was that – so did it surpass your expectation? Was it, it not what you thought? It was kind of what I expected. I thought that they would be really strong. They were really good against the run. And, uh, I mean, what did they have, six sacks? Seven sacks? It was a lot. Seven. Seven, seven. seven sacks. I mean, when was the last time an SMU team had seven sacks? I would, you'd have to go way back. And for all the members of the sack club, thank you for doing that, because I think every time we have a sack, 
it's, about, it, it's like four thousand dollars for the school. So yeah, it's about yeah. thirty, about a little south south of thirty grand for game one. So there are a lot of people that were hurting. It was the most sacks <laughs> actually since UCF uh, in twenty twenty one. So okay. been a couple years. But it was like they they had nowhere to throw the ball. They had that one uh, really nice route at the beginning of the third quarter that was you know got to hand it to La Tech on that one. But <clears throat> I was really pleased. I was really pleased. I thought our running backs did a great job. What do we have? Over 200 yards on the ground, I think, right? Yep. And, and exactly. uh, which is, I mean, you always know if you get 200 yards on the ground, you're probably going to win a football game. So um, LJ did great. Rooster did great. It was just, a, it was just a really, really good uh, first week. And I, I love the way uh, the wide receivers and Preston spread it around the field. I mean, you know, the, the people that we expected to have a big week didn't have necessarily have a big week first week. So you know, and uh, you know, Curly, for example. Uh, you can expect him to have a big one against OU. So, anyway, I thought it was terrific. By the way, that may have been the best week in the history of SMU <laughs> yeah. that, that I can remember. You know, getting into the uh, the, the, uh, the announcement of getting into the ACC and then the game, it was just a spectacular week. And, and we're an SMU podcast, so, I mean, it's, it's it didn't hurt that Colorado uh, took care of business across town either against TCU. Uh, I didn't re- Did they have a game against TCU? I don't remember that. I just... <laughs> Yeah, Coach Prime. Uh, his, Coach Prime his, helping out yeah. some SMU fans. Uh, it was a bad, bad day for the Big Twelve. Anyway, um, SMU now. No, it was look, a terrible day for the Big Twelve. I mean, think it about it. Terrible. Baylor Texas Tech. State beats Baylor. Yeah. I mean, UTSA almost beat Houston. Um, you know, it was just, it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. Wyoming, Wyoming beats uh, Texas Tech. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, one there time. A reason, there, there's a reason it's it's the fourth. A league of, of you know fourth conference. It's good. I, I know Rhett Lashley throwing that around that, that we're in a <laughs> SMU's in a top three conference now. That was that riled some people up. I can tell oh, you. Was, I, I don't think you're on it's Twitter. College football. You got to laugh about it, right? I mean, you got to laugh about this stuff. I don't. I don't know. You're you're not on Twitter. If you do, you have a low key account uh, on there. But uh, that really had the Twitter Twitter gang going uh, once he <laughs> said that. Um, now, before we get to OU, let's talk about this block B a little bit. Okay, because, first wine. Yep, first wine up. It's a special week. It's SMU at Oklahoma, uh, a massive game, 5 o'clock Central, ESPN Plus on Saturday. I'll be there. You'll be there. bunch of people going up for this one. So we wanted to pick out a special one because this one has special meaning to Epic. And for me and my wife, Michelle, we've got a magnum of it that we're waiting to open after our, our first kid is born. Uh, so, and we've been collecting the, you know, each year we've, uh, gotten the the block B to compare them and and tell us a little about bit about how this wine came to be. All right, well, this wine is uh, really has been well known as being one of the best wines uh, in the world. I think a couple of weeks ago it was just voted the number two wine in the U.S. by Wine Enthusiast Magazine, uh, ninety eight point scoring. Uh, it, it wasn't a particularly this vintage, but this wine that it's in the Pony Express uh, case is block B from uh, 2018 and it's a 97 point scoring wine. And um, it's also, it's hundred percent Syrah. It's in a special block that is um, just a, it's Northeast facing slope and it's the right rootstock and they're in the right clone of the Syrah. It is such fantastic wine. You, I would, I can safely say that anybody that tries this wine, you might say it's the best wine you've ever had in your life. It's that good. And I'm not a huge Syrah guy, so when we went to Epic and tasted it for the first time, we realized real quick why Jordan, the winemaker, is so particular about which area it is each year, and and just is it it's just her feel for the wine and how it's come out that she picks that certain area. Yeah, no, she's so she's so meticulous, and we, you know, the, the biggest decision a winemaker has every year is like when to pick. And uh, and then we all we go for is quality. We have a, a very small production of this wine, and uh, <clears throat> it's just uh, one of these wines. In fact, I'll tell you how the name. We got the name Block B. Uh, the first critic that ever reviewed my wines. This was in two thousand and nine, I think it was. Um, Liz and I started this winery twenty years ago. First time a critic ever tried my wine was this real famous critic, and he tried this particular block of Syrah. And he goes, holy fuck. And I, and I was and I was sitting there thinking, what is that? Is that good? Is that bad? What the fuck does that mean? 
And anyway, he's scribbling his notes, right? And, he, and I never got to see it. And then about two months later, uh, the review came out, and I think he gave us a 97 points on our very first wine. And I told him that it was Syrah from block 13. And when he scribbled his notes down, the one and the three merged into it. And when he re, re, uh, wrote his notes, the block 13 turned into block B. So ever since then, we've called it block B. So anyway, that's fine. There you go. Great story. Uh, don't worry. That was edited out for the kids at home. Uh, but <laughs> it, it is, it's fantastic. So always enjoy it. Um, and look, you hope to be deserving it after Saturday when SMU heads up to Oklahoma. This is going to be one of those games. I remember when SMU went up to Michigan. They played some in-state games here, here and there on the road that have been cool to go to. But for me, I've got a bunch of OU buddies. We're excited to at least be up there all together um, and enjoy this one in Norman against a team that you know is coming off a average year. They're hoping to be much improved. They beat Arkansas State 73 to nothing. Last week, a formidable opponent, without a doubt. Uh, what are you excited about uh, with this one? Well, first of all, I, this is what SMU has to do. is We have to start playing these big teams, like you said, like when we played Michigan back when. I don't remember the last time we played OU. So I am psyched. I'm psyched to go up there and see this game. I'm hoping they're going to be overconfident <laughs> from their first week a little bit because – Let's face it, this will be our toughest opponent of the year, probably, and and on the road. So, um, and we're still, you know, we're still, you know, getting our rust off. And so uh, I have, I'm hopeful, but I think the spread is correct. I think they're a 14 point favorite. Do you, what was uh, something that you felt like really had to maybe, Turn up a notch, you know, from game one to game two, especially facing OU. Any any improvements that you really want to see? You know, I just I, I think it has to do more with just kind of like getting into a groove. I mean, really, the first two thirds of the first quarter, we weren't even like clicking yet. So, and then in the second half, I felt like we let down. We're not going to be able to let down for one series against OU because, trust me, this is not La Tech. So, you know, we're just going to have to play a little better than we did in the opening week. But listen, I think I think we have the talent. I think we have uh, the tools. And uh, if we put it all together, we may surprise them. We'll end with this, um, and we'll get to go enjoy this, this bottle of wine. Um, the ACC announcement, the celebration, we talked about the impact when we, we had the you know pre-recorded uh, pod, but was – what were some of your takeaways about the celebration and, and, and the aftermath and being out there on the boulevard and around the game uh, from last week? You know what? I don't think I've ever seen Mustang Nation as happy as it was this past weekend. Everybody that I talked to just had a smile on their face. I mean, it was just more than a smile. It was it was fist bumping and high fives and hugs around. And uh, the doubters, fuck the doubters, right? I mean, there was a whole lot of people – that said we would never get into a P5. And the board kept the faith. David Miller kept the faith. I kept the faith. We thought we had a real shot. And we have been so close for the last, since this initiative started. And so uh, <clears throat> I really do think it was the, the happiest I've seen Mustang Nation. And my feeling is, let's go now. Now that we're in, let's rock. Yeah, a lot of wine to be sold, a lot of uh, business to be conducted for you. Uh, well, now yeah, it's going to be fun, man. That, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, though. Um, Bill, uh, safe travels up to Norman. What an incredible wine here. The Block B, again, it's a part of the Pony Express case that you can buy on Epic. You could also buy uh, Block B individually, of course. Um, and you can use promo code PONY at epicwines.com for free shipping. So be sure to uh, check that out. Um, hey, we'll be back next week with another edition of Walking Strong with Bill Armstrong, uh, talking a little bit of wine from Epic and also uh, some SMU football. Maybe, maybe SMU can pull it off and win one of their wow, first. wow, yeah, that, that would, would be crazy. Be so spectacular! You got a if prediction? We, if we pull off this week, we could run the table. Yep, you got a prediction? Uh, I'm not going to give a prediction of I, <laughs> I just want us to play as good as we possibly can. There it is. Then they'll have it. They'll have a chance to win if they do that. Um, I, I feel, I feel, especially after watching the defense last week, yeah. that's where I'm at. So. All right, brother. Thank you, Billy.
All right, guys. Thanks for listening to this edition of Walking Strong on the On the Pony Express podcast. We'll catch you next week with another one. Have a great weekend and enjoy SMUOU, 5 o'clock Central on ESPN Plus Saturday. Catch you next time. All right.